Splunk DB Connect 3. When we're looking at what is new in DB Connect 3, aka DBX3, we see three main areas. Number one, we improved the performance of DB Connect by quite a lot by simplifying the architecture and by also enabling Splunk on HTTP Event Collector to ingest the data. The second part that we added was an ease of use, the GUI, is what you see is what you get. Um, also, we enable a very nice login and health panels as part of DBX3. And finally, we added a broad support for multiple databases, for example, Spark, SQL, and Hive, uh, Oracle are all part of this release. We also added support for stored procedures, as well as Splunk Cloud now supports DB Connect 3. So you can go directly from Splunk Cloud to your RDBMS. First, let's start with the performance improvements. In DBX2, each input became a Python process. In DBX3, it's a multi-threaded environment. To input the data, Splunk takes the data from the Java thread and pipe the results using HTTP Event Collector directly to the index. So the combination of multiple threads and the HTTP event collector improved the performance by significant numbers. For example, in DBX3, we see that DB input, whether or not it's the rising column or the batch, is now about 10x faster compared to what we saw in DBX2. Also, when we benchmarked the lookup against a table of 100,000 rows, DBX3 is about 2x faster compared to what we saw in DBX2. The third element was the DBX query, the querying that you can do directly from the search head. We benchmarked it against 1 million rows and DBX3 has shown that it's about five times faster compared to the Python approach that we used in DBX2. And finally, pushing the data to the databases in the output, we benchmarked uh, one million rows from Splunk to the database. And also in this case, DBX3 is about 9x faster compared to what we saw in DBX2. With that, let's jump into the demo. With the new architecture, we added a directory under apps, Splunk app DB Connect called drivers. So the assumption now is that you will add the driver, the JDBC driver that Splunk DB Connect requires underneath this driver subdirectory. Once you added the driver, you can start setting up Splunk DB Connect. The very first step you need to do is select configuration, settings, and make sure you have Java in the path. It has to be Java version 8, which will enable the task server, which is a JVM that's continuously running and making the request to the database and the drivers are then enabled. Once that is done, you can go and select the databases and select identities. Once you set up those identities to log into the database, the next part is to enable the connection to the database. In my example, I have a local MySQL database 
and as you can tell from the drop down there is many other options for example you can connect to spark oracle informix and many others and that's where you set up all the parameters to connect to your relational database using the JDBC driver. You are now ready to start setting up your DBX query, your lookup, the output, and the inputs. Normally, we recommend that you start with the SQL Explorer. And the SQL Explorer is the easiest way to look at your data and this is a query that will invoke the command called dbx query. You invoke this command and it goes from the search head directly to your database. You can then save that search and use it by other applications in Splunk. For example, looking at a save search that I created against MySQL, we can see the usage of dbx query inside of a regular Splunk analytics where I can visualize the data and then pipe it into top and leverage the Splunk language on top of the database by adding the SQL directly into, into the SPL query. The second thing you can do is enable lookups for enrichment of the data. First, you need to set up a reference search. This is the search that will connect the Splunk data with your relational database for enrichment. Next, you will look up the table in which you want to connect to. And once you have done those two first setup, you can then map the Splunk field that came from the index to the database field that I'm going to match those. And then the next part is which fields do you want to bring from the database that will enrich that ID? For example, looking at the search that I saved using DBX lookup, we can see index equals summary, that's the Splunk data, and then the DBX lookup, using the lookup that I prepared in advance, is then enriching the data just based on the ID, the ID came from Splunk, but the country code, the city name, and the city population came directly from the database. The third thing you can do in Splunk is you can set up an output. An output allows us to take data from Splunk and push that data to the database. And finally, you can set up inputs. And in input, you have either batch mode that brings the entire database table and index it in Splunk or rising column and rising column allows us to take the data that was updated in the database and bring only the delta from the database into the Splunk indexes. As was the case before, you have to go through a few steps to enable these capabilities. And Splunk tells you exactly which steps have been completed and which steps are still have to be done in order for you to fulfill the input. Looking at index MySQL data, we can see an example in which I took the MySQL data and indexed the data into Splunk. Another thing that is new in DBX3 is the location of the rising column. 
as we mentioned, the rising column will just collect the data that is new from a database and index it into Splunk. To do that, Splunk store the rising column information underneath var lib Splunk mod inputs server and the Splunk app DB Connect. Underneath that, you can see each input will have a file. In that file, Splunk keeps track of which rows have been indexed already, so that whenever you make a new request by the rising column, it will just bring the rows that have been updated or inserted since this last schedule input. In addition, for the inputs underneath the data inputs, HTTP event collector, you can see the DB Connect HTTP input that was installed for you as part of the initial setup of Splunk. And you can override it by pointing the HTTP event collector to store your information into a, your own index. And finally, you can see in DB Connect the new health and performance monitoring that we enable to keep track of the performance of querying the database or inputting the data from a database. And all this information is available in the documentation and in the app. For example, you can see the HTTP event collector a average duration to bring the results and so on and so forth. Also available in the documentation is the performance expectation form Splunk DB Connect compared to what we saw before in DB Connect 2. So to summarize what's new in Splunk DBX3, we improved the performance by significant amount. We made DBX3 easier to use and we added support for cloud and multiple new databases. Thank you.